We're going on a little cross-country ski trip today to uh, Jackson Lake Lodge. One of the things that I've found with the uh, navigator, the energy use estimator with the Tesla is, is that I don't think they take into account the temperatures. Uh, when we first started logged in the trip, it said that we'd have 68% when we arrive at Jackson Lake Lodge. We've driven about 10 miles and now it says 66. We'll check back again when we get to Jackson Lake Lodge and we'll see how far off they are. The temperature is 18 degrees out. The roads are dry. And the speed limit through here is only 55 miles an hour, so it's not a high speed drive. Hasn't been a very good year for snow at these lower elevations. Normally this time of year all the sagebrush would be completely covered. Okay, we're 50 miles into the trip and it's still maintaining that we'll have 64% charge when we reach our destination. And now it's popped up a calculation for our return back to our home at 38%. The temperature has warmed up to 20 degrees. Uh, we're only driving 53 miles an hour. Okay, we've arrived at our destination and we have 63% of our battery left. Initially, the Tesla navigation app showed that we'd have 68. Current temperature is 12 degrees Fahrenheit, and we use 396 watt hours per mile to drive 81.3 miles. Car is a little dirty, but that's winter time in Wyoming. Interesting tracks in the snow. One of the things if you're a potential buyer for a Tesla you need to be aware of is that the range is significantly reduced during the winter months. Uh, you will see that the uh, Model X 100D is EPA rated for 295 miles, but that's under ideal conditions. And uh, as you can see today on our trip, we consumed around 400 watt hours per mile. And that was driving at less than 60 miles per hour virtually <laughs> no headwind and on dry roads. Now granted the temperature will range between 10 and 15 degrees and uh, so a lot of the energy goes to heating the cabin. And in our case today we just heated the cabin normally. We didn't take any extreme measures to try to conserve energy. But under those kind of conditions you're going to find that your range is going to be around 220 miles as compared to the 295 miles that EPA rates it. And if you have a headwind, or you're driving much faster, say you're driving 70 miles an hour, or if there's snow on the road, it's going to be less. And uh, while I really enjoy our Model X, and I think it's a great car for the winter, you just have to be realistic about and have proper expectations about how it can be used during the winter month. If you have superchargers that are spaced or all along your route, that's great. But in my particular case, it's about 200 miles from where I live to the nearest supercharger down on I-80. And with a 220 mile range in the winter and a 200 mile trip, all it takes is a little bit of wind and a little bit of snow on the road and it's just too darn far. I, th I think the pucker factor is too much for most people. There's nothing wrong with uh, the Tesla Model X having it as a, your car to drive in the winter. I just think that people need to be realistic about their expectations. And whatever you do, you know, plan ahead. Use the tools that you have. And for me, I use kind of a general round number of 400 watt hours per mile. And uh, if it's beyond the range, you better be taking an ICE car or find some other alternative for charging.